Howdy, how's everyone doing today? Uh, so a box showed up and uh, it's pretty big and I thought I'd just unbox it for you. Mm. Gonna unbox it with my trusty SOG Trident Tanto. Still after What's it been? Oh, sorry, I'm shaking the camera. After making videos for 12 years, I'm still unboxing with the same knife. Stills mint. Right, let's see what we got here. Giant box. Testing out a shotgun mic too here, so if the audio's not great, uh, it's the microphone, it's a new mic. Oop. I'm not using the lavalier because I'm moving around a lot here, so. Uh, I got a lens cleaning cloth, a giant UV filter, it's a 105 millimeter filter. I'm not sure how good these are. I've never heard of the brand. This is uh, Chiaro. I don't know. I think any 105 millimeters is uh, kind of expensive. They say 99% transmission UV filter, so maybe it's pretty good. And uh, oh, a jewel case for the filter. Giant case. So if you hadn't guessed, this is a lens. It's <laughs> a camera lens. I'm just going to move my chair for a second here big camera lens. There was a good rebate three months ago or something and uh, I ordered it. Not really sure if I wanted it or not but um, I couldn't pass up the price. You know how that goes. Uh, then I got a optics cleaning kit. I mean I got a few of those already but Okay, let's get the giant box out of the way here. Okay, now we got a smaller giant box. Okay, so... never had a lens this big um, new before. I've always bought used for the super telephotos, but it looks like from everything I've seen and watched and read about it, it seemed like this is the ultimate super telephoto um, for sure for the Fuji system. So, since I'm actually filming right now on the Fuji X-T3, if you wondered, this is uh, the lowest bit rate though in 4K. This is uh, 100 megabit uh, per second. So, uh, because YouTube just compresses it like crazy anyway, no sense in just destroying my hard drive uh, with 400 megabit. Okay, so we got a nice little case, padded shoulder strap. One thing that's interesting is the, it's a little bit lighter than the 300 2.8s that, that I've had before. And for sure the 400 2.8 that I had. I had a manual focus 400 millimeter 2.8 from the 80s, an AIS lens, Nikon. And um, that thing was so heavy. I carried it around the zoo all day on a tripod. And uh, kids were coming up to me, what is that, a telescope? No, it's a camera lens. Uh, okay, they got a little, they got a little pouch right on top here for the teleconverter. 
What's really cool about this lens is it comes with a dedicated teleconverter. It's um, matched for the lens. So it's a little smaller than the full frame teleconverters as it should be. Made in Japan. Uh, I love made in Japan. Can't can't beat that. Japan or Switzerland, you know, those are, those are the tops. Germany makes nice stuff. America makes good stuff, of course. Uh, but, uh, let's see here. Get this thing out without busting it. So this is officially the most expensive lens I've ever bought. The most, the most I've ever paid, let's say it that way. Um, I've had expensive lenses in the past, but I bought them when they were 20 years old and used. <clears throat> oh, okay. Get this thing. It is nice looking. It's clean. It's got that uh, almost pearlescent matte, kind of white silvery finish going on. It's got optical image stabilization, and I hear it's the stabilization is incredible. What's nice is, as far as super telephotos go, this is the lightest, um, the lightest large aperture super telephoto I've ever owned. Really a super telephoto I consider <clears throat> f2.8 or bigger. And this is an f2. <clears throat> there it is. Well, it's certainly a thing of beauty. Oh, okay. Uh, one, one critique I've heard about Here's all the switches over here. On the lens was that the aperture ring didn't have a strong enough detent. And if you bumped it, you could accidentally turn it off of A, which means you can control the aperture from the body. But it actually feels stiffer than I expected, so based on those reviews. That was the one critique I've seen from anybody. Everybody says this is like the ultimate, the sharpest, great for portraits. So it's a 200 millimeter f2, and uh, let's take this giant lens cap off. It's a big, big piece of glass there. 105 millimeter filters, which I got included in the kit. Normally I'm not a filter user, but since I paid this much for it, I'll probably. Uh, put that filter on for a little while anyway. Retail on this lens is $6,000. Um, they had a solid rebate though, so I had to take advantage of that. Um, I wish there was more motorsports in my area. Uh, we've got a track, because this would be the perfect lens for it. Uh, on the crop sensor camera, this is like a 300 millimeter. And then when you add the teleconverter, the 1.4 teleconverter, uh, it goes down to a 2.8 aperture, which is still, that's a big aperture. Um, it's starting with like a full aperture, too big almost. Uh, so it gets down to like just a normal big aperture of 2.8 when you put the teleconverter on. But then you have the equivalent of a 420 millimeter in 35 millimeter terms. Uh, field of view, not focal length, um, which field of view is really what matters anyway. Uh, with uh, and then without the teleconverter on so so with the tel teleconverter you can get a lot of compression you can get um, Some wildlife some larger wildlife. I still think that's a bit short for birding Unless you're right up on the birds. I mean you'd have to be in a blind with uh, You know shooting 10 feet away or something uh, The other thing that teleconverters give you is closer focus for that that effective focal length so that's kind of neat. It's almost like an extension tube to give you a closer focus on a lens. Um, but yeah, it's a thing of beauty. I'm going to be doing some shooting with this. Let's put the uh, 
let's put the this guy on uh it's got a built-in foot which is awesome it's got the arca swiss uh dovetail mounting built in and it has the two different threads and there's a little bit of rubber grip here so you can use it as a handle to carry your camera and lens which is sweet none of the other lenses super telephotos i've had had that i always had to buy an extra foot and then screw it in and it was screwed in with one little screw and you always thought if that screw breaks there goes my lens and if i was renting at the time it's like there goes my six thousand dollar rental uh, deposit uh, but this has four four screws holding the foot on so that's not going to come off so that's awesome uh, this is a lot more modern of a lens, I think. Um, I forget how many low dispersion elements are in here, but there's a few. There's enough, let's say. Um, there's also no fluorite. And there's no phase Fresnel lens, which both have weird characteristics. Uh, Nikon uses them, and I think Canon uses them too. Um, this is a more traditional optical kind of design but um, uh, so I think it has some advantages over the Canon and Nikkor uh, options because of that it's also a crop sensor so it doesn't have to um, Uh, it has a smaller image circle, so it doesn't have to bend the light as far to get to the sensor, which I think has some benefits in sharpness. I'm not an optical engineer. Yeah, look at that thing. Beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. I like the colors, too. I always thought a lighter colored telephoto was the way to go, because if you're out if you're out shooting like an IndyCar race or something, or MotoGP or something, that would be awesome. Um, and you're out in the sun cooking... A black lens you're just cooking the internal elements and the glue and everything the rubber parts uh, you know so that thing that thing could be really too hot for the lens the, the whole reason for the lighter color bodies um, is so they don't absorb heat from the Sun so Canon had that and so I know why I kind of didn't really do it they had a limited edition run one time of the light gray telephotos or the the light gray lenses and um i know they they want to separate them because when there's a when there's a pack of photographers at the olympics or at a sporting event then people can know all the black lenses those are nikons you know so uh now the light lenses they're not all necessarily canons uh sony's got some white lenses and Fuji's got some, this is like pearlescent silver, really, like a really light silver. Very nice, very nice looking. I'd put it on my camera, but my camera's filming right now, so there's that. Uh, everything I've seen says it's basically the sharpest lens ever made, and the bokeh is super nice and creamy, so um, I'm looking forward. i got to find some uh, portrait subjects. Um... If I ever ask ask girls, they think I'm some kind of a creep or something. But I'm like, no, I have serious camera equipment, and I've been taking pictures for 25 years. So the pictures are going to come out good, trust me. And then they they ghost me or don't show up or something. I think they think there's like there's some ulterior motive if you uh, if you're not charging them. You know, if they're if they're paying you, then they show up. So this would be great for senior pictures. Um, I could get back into that. I'm gonna have to because I gotta pay for this, you know. So that's kind of my my uh, mission. New equipment inspires me to start taking pictures again. I don't know what it is. If I just have the same stuff and uh, I can't take pictures of new subjects, it's all the same thing. I I uh, you know I get lazy and I go yeah whatever. I'll do it some other time. But if I got something new, I need I need a reason to go use it. So. So I'll be sharing some photos with you once I get some. I mean, this is literally just out of the box. So uh, thanks for watching. And uh, if you have this lens, let me know how you like it. Um, I've been having a hard time finding pictures taken with it. But uh, the couple that I have found, uh, the, the rendering is just incredible. So 
we're going to, uh, I'm sticking with the smaller, the smaller uh, sensor and the less megapixels, only 26 megapixel camera here. Um, but uh, a lot of the people that I've read about that have this lens said that it out resolves the full frame camera's resolution with a full frame lens because it's so sharp. It's like there's 26 megapixels, but it resolves every single one of them. So I'm pretty excited about that because hard drive space is just getting eaten up like crazy with all this 4K video for sure. But uh, yeah, so should be pretty cool. So I think I'm going to hang on to this one. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching and I'll stop rambling. We'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.